Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome back to the seventh and final episode of this mini-series on spin locks. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be looking at the pthreads implementation of a spin lock. Now, up until this point, we've been focused on writing our own implementations of spin locks and going over the various optimizations that you can apply. Um, however, in the real world, you'll typically be using a spin lock implementation from some library. And it will be a very rare occurrence where you decide that um, the spin lock implementation from the library doesn't exactly suit your needs or, say, is the performance bottleneck of your application. And in those cases, um, you might do a very you know, hand-tuned, dedicated spin lock implementation for your particular use case. But in general, we'll be using libraries. So it's important to understand what these libraries are doing. And it's also fun to see that some of the optimizations that we applied um, can be pretty easily found within a library implementation of a spin lock. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to be looking under this pthread directory to our baseline pthread benchmark. So just like all of our other benchmarks that we've seen throughout the series, we're going to be using the exact same use case where we'll spawn one, two, four, and eight threads. And for each of those threads, they'll run this ink function where for 100,000 iterations, our threads will try and grab the lock, this time using this pthread spin lock, then increment some shared value, then unlock our spin lock, which is this pthread spin lock T. So inside of our benchmark code, um, the only main difference that is that instead of using, say, our handwritten spin lock implementation, we're just going to be using this pthread spin lock T that we have to initialize here as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile this, look at the performance numbers, and then look a bit at the assembly to see uh, some of the commonalities that there are between um, the pthreads implementation of a spin lock and some of the optimizations we've seen in the past. So we'll quit out and we'll go ahead and compile our baseline pthread spin lock, all the exact same optimizations um, from the previous videos. So O3 optimization level with mArch and m2 equals native and link time optimization. Okay, so we have that compiled and we'll do perf record so we can look at the assembly. Go ahead and run pthread spin. And what we see off the bat is that um, you know, the, the pthread spin lock does a great job in the single threaded case, which is uh, better than we were doing. We were hitting around one millisecond for most of our um, spin lock implementations for the single threaded case. It's about half that in the 0.651 case where we have, uh, or the single threaded case where we have no contention, about 0.651 milliseconds. And it does a decent job at all the other uh, levels as well, um, kind of on the same level as our um, passive back off implementation. So if we go ahead and say, go back to um, our passive back off implementation and compile this, you can see that the numbers are relatively close. So, you know, 2.5 milliseconds, 10.2 milliseconds, 48 milliseconds, you know, in the same ballpark as the 2.62, 13.5 and 51.3 that we're seeing for the pthread spin lock implementation. So let's go ahead and take a look at the assembly now. So we'll do perf report. That way we can actually understand what's going on at the low level. And you see there's a slight difference uh, than what we've seen in the past. So instead of everything just being inlined and in one particular place, we now have uh, calls to pthread spin lock, right? That lock method. Um, and we see that this is taking most of our time, which is to be expected. We have a very high contention scenario for our spin lock. So a lot of our, and for a lot of the time, our threads will just be waiting for the lock. Then we have our actual thread that's running. So this is going to be the ink function. And then down here we have our pthread spin unlock uh, method or function. So this is just going to be very, very simple, just freeing the lock. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by looking at um, um, our ink function. And it's pretty simple. It looks very much like we saw in all the previous videos. And the key idea here is that first thing we do is lock our spin lock using a call to pthread spin lock. Then we increment our shared value. Then we end up calling pthread spin unlock. We decrement our loop counter. So we're doing it for 100,000 iterations. And then we jump back to up to the top and do it all over again. Right? So, so that's pretty simple. That's just our ink function. So then we can zoom in a little bit more to say uh, the more interesting parts of this and the spin lock specific parts. So we'll start with pthread spin lock. And it's a pretty streamlined function and it's pretty similar to what we've seen in the past. 
um, in terms of functionality. We can kind of go a, a little bit line by line to see some of the optimizations that we know about. So the first thing we're trying to do, we see an atomic right up front. This is clearly trying to grab the lock. Uh, instead of using exchange here, they're using an atomic decrement. So we try and grab the lock, right? If we get the lock, we end up just returning. If we don't get the lock, we end up falling into um, a passive back off, right, optimization. So we're using that pause um, instruction, right? Similar to how we use that mm pause intrinsic to get this pause instruction in our passive back off implementation. Then you can see we're actually inside of a locally spinning optimization as well. That's where this pause is going on. We're instead of trying to immediately grab the lock again, we're doing a read from memory and we're doing a compare, right? So we're doing a compare of the current implementation or rather of the current state of the lock with zero. And we're either jumping back up to try and grab the lock if we see that the lock has suddenly become free or we end up just going back and pausing again, right? So we have a very tight loop for our um, spinning locally um, optimization. And then we have this pause in here to do passive back off. So you see that a lot of these concepts that we saw in our own implementations that we were trying out um, exist in library implementations as well, right? And this is because they just work, right? They're, uh, they've been proven out you know, time and time again to be decent ways to implement a spin lock. Now, what you'll see here is you won't see things like exponential back off or random back off um, because these are very likely to not be portable in terms of performance on various different systems. However, just say having this very simple single pause instruction kind of back off is going to end up being uh, portable enough. Okay, so that's going to be our lock method. You can see um, two of the optimizations that we know about. So. Um, we can see our passive back off and our spinning locally optimizations. Let's go ahead and take a look at our rather uninteresting um, unlock method, right? And similar to our um, unlock method that um, we implemented in C++, all they're really doing here is storing one um, to the state of our spin lock. So basically just saying, okay, the lock is now free and then we end up returning, right? So very simple. Um, so the spin lock is, um, roughly the same or very similar to what we had looked at and implemented ourselves. Okay, so you know that's really it when it comes to the pthreads implementation of a spin lock, right? So what you'll find is that you know for, for things like this, you won't see all those kind of very niche optimizations that we've looked at in the past, namely because they're very unlikely to be portable. But it's always a good under a good idea to understand what exactly is going on underneath the hood because you know, similar to how we got better performance with our own implementation of a spin lock here. So our exponential back off implementation was actually much faster than the pthread spin lock implementation, right? Similar to that, there may be situations in your own code where you may deem it worth it to swap out the pthread spin lock with your own implementation of a spin lock. Um, but that's going to go ahead and do it for this video and indeed this mini series. As always, you can find all the code for um, this episode and the entire mini series at github.com slash coffee before arch. And if we go under the repositories and then under the spin locks directory, you can go ahead and find all the code here. Um, so we looked at the pthread directory today and here's our baseline pthread spin lock. So go ahead and download this, check it out. Uh, but that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick and I hope you have a nice day.